I pinned one side. Mr. Wagner. She's coming by, but we do have executive session. Is it going to be a long one? Oh yeah, <laughs> they just moved right up. They, yeah, they need to be snipped a okay. touch on the end, and then, and then so tied so, so yeah, so you just need to take a peep out or yeah. take it like a link out or yeah. whatever. Okay. Okay. So now does she drive this convertible? Oh, no, she's my younger one. Oh, that's Ava. But your older one drives the convertible. Okay. Okay. All right, we have arrived at uh, six thirty. We will uh, call this planning meeting to order. Uh, right now, I know that uh, Eric Wolfgang is on a business trip, the last uh, some project he has going on. I know Tim Beaver is also on a business trip, and Carl is coming, we think. But uh, at any rate, we will start the meeting, and with that, if we could, we will start with administrative reports. Dr. Snell, please. We will uh, start with the high school. Dr. Zarnecki. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Kaufman sends his best. He's currently doing his two and a half weeks of military duty up at the Indian Fort Gap. And I said, that's great, as long as you're not being deployed for a year. So that was good, good for us. So, but um, September 26th through October 1st, all ninth graders at the high school participated in our Get Real program. The Get Real program is an educational opportunity to help learners understand the impact of hateful words and actions, as well as provide them strategies for creating positive change. We feel participating in the program helps learners take ownership of creating a positive school culture at Century York High School. For the first time, all juniors will have the choice between taking the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, better known as the ASVAB, or the PSAT. Both tests will be administered, administered on the mornings of October 16th at 7.45 a.m. Though the ASVAB is historically used by the military for placement purposes, it also can provide gainful insight into career exploration. Taking the PSAT provides several benefits to our 11th grade uh, learners. The PSAT allows learners to, one, find out what the college board exams are like, two, compete for scholarships awarded by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation, three, to predict their SAT scores, four, to estimate their chances of being accepted by the college of their choice, and five, having the option to have their names placed on mailing lists of colleges that are looking for learners of comparable scores. Learners can expect their scores in late October, early November. Along with the scores, College Board will send information about a free online SAT tutoring program through Khan Academy, specifically ta tailored to a child's PSAT strengths and areas of growth. Homecoming week is upon us. The high school has many wonderful things planned for learners in the community this week, uh, including Spirit Week, Thursday's Bonfire, uh, and parade. Uh, many food vendors will be there starting at about 545. A pep rally on Friday, the homecoming game of course on Friday evening versus Northeastern. Saturday's dance uh, at 7 p.m. We are looking forward to seeing our community, school board, alumni, and Central York's faculty, staff, and learners at many of the events this upcoming week. The Performing Arts Department would like to invite the community to its annual Fall Pops concert Thursday, October 17th at 7.30. It will be a great evening featuring all the high school cho uh, choirs, orchestras, and bands. Uh, and lastly, Mr. Trimmer's athletic report. Girls Tennis won Division I for the first time in 10 years. The golf team won Division I for the fifth straight year. Football is currently in first place in Division I. 
Field hockey is currently tied for first. Girls volleyball is currently tied for first. Water polo team has been very competitive this season, competing in uh, league play in tournaments. Boys soccer is in second place. Girls soccer is in first place. Girls cross country continues to be competitive in a tough division one. Boys cross country is in second place. Uh, senior Carson Baca won this, his second consecu consecutive Division III uh, individual golf championship with a two-day score of 10 under. This was the lowest winning score in Division III history. Um, the postseason will start uh, the middle of the month for most teams who are looking for continued success in the postseason. As a follow-up uh, question about seminars at a previous board meeting, um, the adulting seminar is alive and well. Uh, we have 27 learners signed up for the seminar. It's early, however, kids are doing some career exploration. In weeks to come, they'll be learning about fiscal management, grocery shopping on a budget, what to consider when looking to rent an apartment, uh, and effective communication and time management skills. Uh, I talked to one uh, learner today about the seminar, and she said it's great. We, we're learning about a lot of stuff that we feel is going to be useful uh, when we graduate from high school. So, Penny, any questions? That completes my report. I just have one. The, I've never really thought about this before, but the ASRAB scores, are those tracked at all relative to the high school? Do we get any kind of rating how well our kids do on I have not seen them. I know the, what happens after the uh, kids get their scores, a member of the military comes in and meets with them individually or in small groups to kind of goes over what those scores mean and, and what they could do with them. That's a great convenience to be able to do it at the school, so I'm happy to hear that. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Next from the middle school, Dr. Harper. Good evening. This Friday, representatives from York County School of Technology will be coming to the middle school and will give a presentation for all eighth graders. During this presentation, eighth graders will learn about the various academic, extracurricular, and career opportunities that tech has to offer. Applications for York County School of Technology will be available immediately after um, the presentation on Friday. And new this year, the application can also be done online. Next Tuesday, October 15th, all seventh graders have the opportunity to participate in the Young Women's and Young Men's Leadership Conference. The Leadership Conference is presented by York College to seventh graders across the county. The goal of the conference is to provide valuable life lessons, promote positive self-image, and reduce bullying among middle schoolers. Fall athletics are wrapping up. Many learners have had the opportunity to build a sense of community while engaging in football, cross country, field hockey, and cheerleading. Additionally, many of our learners are participating in music programs like Fife and Drum. If you would like to see our Fife and Drum Ensemble in the community, you can spot them at their upcoming event in the Manchester Halloween Parade on October 20th. At the end of the month, the Burns Health Education Center will be presenting a program called Breaking the Silence, once again to all seventh graders. The program focuses on mental illness, including depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, and panic disorder or phobias. During this program, participants will learn ways to reduce the stigma often attached to these illnesses and the importance of getting help for themselves or encouraging others to seek help. Um, I believe that you previously heard about the diversity listening tour that is going to be happening in the district. Um, we are honored to host that at the middle school on October 16th. We have identified 21 learners who will be meeting with the diversity specialists and other staff members in the hub um, to discuss where our district has been and to find out where we need to go next. So we are currently in the process of obtaining parent permission from all 21 of these learners. And last but not least, you are invited to attend the CYMS play, the Brothers Grimm Spectaculathon, on November 1st at 7.30 p.m. and November 2nd at 2.30 p.m. Pending any questions, that concludes my report.
diversity listening tour October 16th? Um, I have to double check. I do have it on my calendar, but I don't know off the top of my head. Thank you. From the elementary schools, Mr. Yuchef. Good evening. We'll start with Hayshire this evening. Uh, Mrs. Snare shares with us that Hayshire's color run that's sponsored by the Hayshire PTO will be coming up on October 13th at John Rudy Park. The, the color run is Hayshire's fundraiser for the school year. Parents and children participate together during this fun event. Word Power is also set for October 16th at Hayshire. Word Power Night is a family event for all Hayshire learners and their families to engage in games to help build sight word knowledge. Everyone is invited to wear superhero clothing. Games will be made at the Word Power Night that can be used in the home for learning. And finally, Book Fair and Pumpkin Decorating Family Night is coming to Hayshire on October 22nd. From Stony Brook, uh, Stony Brook had the honor of hosting John Pritikin, a Guinness World Record holder for an assembly in September. The assembly was sponsored by the National Character Education Foundation and the Office of Pennsylvania State Representative Keith Gillespie. John has spoken and inspired over 8 million students around the world, as well as numerous professional sports teams. At an event outside of London, England, John broke, the set, broke and set two Guinness World Records. The official record title that landed his picture in the Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records for the tightest circumference of two aluminum frying pans rolled together with his bare hands in less than 30 seconds. It's a long title. <laughs> I'm trying to envision that right now. At the assembly, John showed some amazing feats of strength by breaking a wooden baseball bat, bending an iron rod, and his famous feet that made him a Guinness World Record holder. John's message about how he was bullied as an elementary student because he couldn't read was powerful to our learners and our staff. Many of the students and staff connected with John's message. He personally high-fived and told each learner as they left the assembly that they were special and don't ever forget this. It was an uplifting assembly for all the learners and staff as well, and many of the individuals that attended commented it was the best assembly they had ever been a part of. From Roundtown, Mr. Miller shared with us that this week three Roundtown teachers were awarded special commendations. Mrs. Barr Michaels and Ms. Renee Decker earned a Spirit of Youth Award at Saturday's Communities That Care Spirit of Youth Recognition Breakfast. And also this week, Mrs. Deb Hauer was awarded the Browns Orchard Teacher of the Month. All three ladies were nominated by former students. Congratulations to them all. At Sinking Springs, students in Ms. Anderson, Mrs. Beck, and Ms. Elwood's multi-age classroom used the design thinking process to develop ideas that would improve Sinking Springs Elementary School. The design thinking process involved learners creating, administering, and interpreting a school-wide student survey to define areas that peers thought needed improvement. Based on the results of the survey, teams of students were able to select and improve, to select an area to improve upon, brainstorm solutions, and construct prototypes in order to test out their proposed solution. One idea was the automatic water bottle filler upper. Based on survey information, a problem area at Sinking Springs is that the current water fountains do not allow for water bottles to be filled. Students designed a new fountain that would also allow students to fill up water bottles. Another idea is the dry arama. Students worked with the head custodian, Mr. Beck, to find out that the cost of paper towels in the bathrooms is over $2,700 per school year. Based on student concerns about the cost, waste, and mess of using paper towels, the dry arama comes in at a cost of $1,200, saves money, and saves trees. And finally, from North Hills Elementary School, the North Hills Robotics team is now up and running again for the 2019-2020 school year. This school year, we had over 65 learners try out for the team. Out of the 65 learners, we were able to form two teams of eight children each. Teams were selected not only by their coding skill, but also their ability to demonstrate the soft skills of teamwork, empathy, and integrity. This year's team will compete against other first LEGO League teams in the region at Penn State, Berks County, with a chance to move on to the state competition. For the learners who did not make the team, we were fortunate enough to have a tremendous amount of adult interest um, and support that allow us to have those children uh, participate in intramural sessions throughout the school year where they will learn the same skills as the FF FLL teams and practice and hone their skills throughout the school year. We're excited for the continued growth with this program and we look forward to two teams representing North Hills at this year's competition. Depending on any questions, this concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you. Mr. Grove. 
Good evening. I have three items to share with the community and the board. Uh, the first being trauma-informed care and the September 20th all-staff professional development. The Central York School District family learned how trauma negatively impacts the brains and its functions. That uh, interactions with learners and staff can be enhanced through mindful practices and positive relationships are the cornerstone of a healthy culture. The presentation is at your desktops. I also put those out for community members if you have an opportunity to uh, peruse the document. Um, the second all staff professional development is scheduled for this Friday, October 11th, 2019 at the high school auditorium from 1 to 3 p.m. You're most certainly welcome to attend. In addition, a K through 12 CYST trauma team participated in its first monthly intensive training on Friday, October 4th. Members of the team will work with building principals to formalize ongoing professional development at the building level. So I thank the school board, I thank Dr. Snell for allowing us to move forward with this important initiative. The second item is the preview phase of the Future Ready PA Index. It was introduced last year, we have spoken about it. The Future Ready PA Index is a site that is made available for the purposes of publishing varied 2018-19 standardized data points found within all Pennsylvania school districts. We expect the final release to be in late October, uh, possibly early uh, November. In addition, the Future Ready P Index, uh, in addition to that, I'll present a 2018-2019 district standardized assessment report during my November assistant superintendent's report. So we'll make sure that you are fully aware of local assessment data along with the state assessment data. And in closing, uh, the final item is that of the October educational focus. Ms. Seabright, Special Education Supervisor, Ms. Warfield, High School Transition Coordinator, will be joining our community and school board members to provide an update on the Unified Track and Field Program, as well as introduce the recommended next event, Unified Bocce Ball Program. At this point in time, I'm happy to respond to any questions the board members may have. Banging your head on concrete is not good for your brain, I can tell you that. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Dr. Snow. Thank please. you. Several items follow up. The pool scoreboard has been ordered due to the diligence of Dr. Pottinger. What was expected to be a six foot by 10 foot board um, at no additional cost has been increased to roughly seven by 11 feet, and uh, they actually knocked off another $750. So that is on order. We have no indication yet upon arrival, but we're prepared to receive the said board and um, install it when it arrives. Um, we received notification today that our flexible instruction day application was approved. Uh, that is a three-year approval starting this year and continuing through 2021-22 school year. Um, and so that's a bit of good news. Town meeting um, is scheduled for later, <clears throat> excuse me, this month, October 29th, 7 p.m. at Sinking Springs. Agenda items will include uh, an overview of safety. Um, we will take a look at uh, the topic of starting, uh, flipping the start of the school day, and then we'll do a communications exercise with those in attendance. What I will uh, remind everybody that we've talked about, and uh, on October 17th, there will be a report that was commissioned by the state of Pennsylvania around Pennsylvania's experience thus far with changing the start, uh, whether it's a flip or a pushback to the school day, that report comes out on October 17th. We'll prepare to do just a little bit of an overview for that uh, at our town meeting as well. And the last thing I have is uh, Mr. Kessler pulls this up. This would be a follow-up item to the summer uh, food program service. We asked for some additional costs. And so salary and benefits are there, food, paper supplies, and then the uh, electric charge uh, as determined by uh, this summer. So we give you that as a little bit of a follow-up, some more detail that you had asked for. Um, I believe as I look down my list, that is all I have. I'll be happy to answer any questions. 7 p.m., yes, sir. And I'll just emphasize on the flipping of the school day, the board is absolutely investigating no decision one way or the other, just totally open to ideas. Any other questions? Uh, I neglected to say earlier that we will have a brief uh, executive session over a contractual issue. That brings us to citizen comment, the uh, first of the two times on the schedule, which anybody would like to talk. 
Okay, discussion items. I'll thank you. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. Uh, the first item is the uh, Special Olympics um, Unified uh, Champions uh, Schools Program. I will turn it over to Mr. Grove. Thank you. Um, as mentioned, we will have an educational focus, so the community and the school board members will have a chance to hear from uh, Ms. Seabright and Ms. Warfield. But in addition to that, we're hoping that you would be kind enough to take a look at the 2019-20 Unified Champion Schools Memorandum of Understanding that pertains to this particular school year. And uh, in summary, um, the Special Olympics really is uh, celebrating the intellectual uh, learners with intellectual development uh, disabilities and cognitive uh, delays. And uh, this particular uh, MOU will um, ask you to uh, renew the track and field that you were so kind to approve last year. And they had three events and uh, <laughs> it was just amazing. I can't even begin to put that into words. So um, we're asking you to renew that again for this year and we're asking you to consider bocce ball as the new um, additional sport. We were selected by the uh, Special Olympics of Pennsylvania as one of the few districts to uh, add a second district or a sex, second sport due to the fact that uh, we did so well implementing the first. So uh, we're honored to be selected. So uh, the cost to the school district. Uh, last year, the Special Olympics covered the cost for the track and field. They will again trouble, cover the cost for the track and field. The bocce ball would be an additional cost to the district. The total cost is $1,500. Break it down to 1,000 for coaches, typically two, and then uniforms, 500. Um, so what would happen here is Miss Seabright does a tremendous job with the polar bear plunge. And the polar bear plunge usually generates $1,800 uh, per year based on participation. So um, we believe we can cover the cost for the expansion of the bocce ball at no cost to the school district. Um, so we would ask you to consider both programs, knowing full well that uh, many learners, both regular ed and learners with uh, intellectual development and cognitive delays, uh, could participate in track and field, and then three to eight players would be able to participate in the second uh, sport, bocce ball. So I would be happy to answer any questions you have about the memorandum of understanding, and our hope is that you would be able to review it and then consider it on the 21st, uh, knowing that uh, bocce ball begins in December, ideally. So we're just trying to get ahead uh, for your review and approval. Where are they gonna play bocce at? It would actually be an inside sport. Mm -hmm. and, well, it's uh, December, so. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed, good point, good point. I would uh, say it would be it's at the high school. Not anything by me today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I would say it's at the high school, but I'm hesitating, so I can get you a better answer. I think they set up, I've seen a picture, they've set it up mm -hmm. on the gym floor, so there's okay, some yeah. sort of... Um, way to make it work. Dance. Yes, sir, some way to make it's it work. It's a portable court. Yeah. Cool, all right. That's neat. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes. Thank you. There won't be any damage. Yeah, let me know. That, that way I damage the gym floor for bocce to enable <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you. Good to go? Good. Any questions? All right, the next item is the enrollment update. Every October, we pull together, um, as I've said in the past, October 1st is the enrollment report date for the Pennsylvania Department of Education for schools to finalize or at least standardize their attendance for the year. So here is our annual report, and uh, Mr. Kessler, if you can pull up some numbers or make it a little bit larger. The number for this year, uh, as of October 1st, is 5,720. Um, and uh, you will be able to see starting completely on the left, that's 2003 through 2004. Um, and you can, if you recall back in the day when we were in the early 2000s, we were growing, we were building, adding on to our K-3 buildings. Um, and you can see roughly in the 2008-9 school year, things start to settle down at 5,500, and then we've ticked up a couple hundred, but basically, or for all intent and purposes, relatively a stable overall number. Um, one of the things that we try to do, and it takes a little bit of maneuvering, is to show you these numbers as students in chairs in our school. There are IU programs and some other sort of things, that, but, but when we talk about how many students are sitting in a chair today in Central, 5,720 is the number that we're going to go with as of October 1. The next slide will show you the uh, minority population, students of color, if you will. 2019-2020, um, it is 33.3%, a slight uptick from 32.6 last year, 
Historically, I think the chart starts at 91.92, and so that very first year is 4.9 percent, and you can see throughout the years um, the uh, change in uh, students of color here at in Central. If we break down that by year, um, this is difficult, and I'll just pull some colors for you to, to help you. Um, if you take a look at the light green, that is our African American population, and again, if you just follow it along, you can see for the last four or five years, it has sort of steadied uh, and actually decreased slightly. If you take a look at the purple, that would be our Hispanic population, and you can see that continues to rise. Um, just as a, as a point of notice when you're looking for trends. Uh, multiracial, uh, again, all of these are self-identified. Um, whether you choose African-American, Hispanic, or multiracial, those are self-identified, self-reported. We just aggregate that information out of Skyward, our student information through registrations, so forth. Um, you can see that that uh, trend has increased since it came into being. In 2009-10 school year was the first time, and it really came out of the No Child Left Behind, and they created this disaggregated group called multiracial school districts, um, at least in Pennsylvania, have been counting it since 2009-2010. Gives you just a little bit of some of the trends there. Um, again, happy to answer any questions, or we can drive into that a little bit deeper. Total free and reduced learners this year, you will see that we are at 2007 again at a 5,720, um, that is the total. And then you can see again the population run. This chart starts in 2001-2, uh, which you can't see, but it, it shows the steady increase. The last couple of years have, have sort of stabilized. Um, the next slide, overall percentage is 35% of our students. Again, we continue to make sure that kids have ap access to applications, continue to bring it forward. Um, and again, you can decide, you know, if some kids don't, or this number is certainly underrepresented uh, in the total. The next slide would be that population by building. It gets a little clumped in there, and it, it's certainly in there for board docs for you to look at. Um, but you get to see the overall trend, and we'll just look at Hayshire there first on the left. You can see the increase in those students that qualify for free and reduced lunch on the left. Um, and then all of the various schools' trends are there for your information. English language learners, um, we're up to 124 this year. I do not have the most recent. We're working on the most recent list and how many languages. We will, we will follow up with that, but a slight increase there from the previous couple of years with our learners who are coming um, with a, a different language as the primary and working hard to uh, learn English. The last slide I put together, this is, um, I'll, I'll explain each one of the iterations there are the various weeks since the beginning of the school year, which was August 23rd. It gives you a little bit of a sense of our enrollment, but really on the right-hand side is what I want to just sort of talk about for a minute. We take a look at this. The last Pell study we did a number of years ago said that we would have a decrease enrollment in our elementary schools. And so if you look at K1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, they are all on the bottom half of this chart, um, and that is anywhere from 430 students and below. If you take a look at the upper end of that chart, short of the 11th grade, which is, is down below, you will see most secondary students are anywhere between 450 and 480, if you will. So again, it's just it's helpful to sort of look as, as students come into the district, where the population shifts, where the higher, the lower numbers are. Um, the numbers in the elementary aren't, aren't as low as Pell predicted, but there is the trend uh, that the elementary numbers would, would decrease, and that has played itself out. So those are the quick snapshots that we always come back to you on October 1st. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. Questions? Thank you. Next item is the winter athletic co-curricular appointments. Um, we, uh, an annual approval, we will bring those forward next year. Uh, next year, <laughs> excuse me, um, in two weeks when we have our next meeting. Um, but we'll be happy to answer any questions regarding those co-curricular opportunities. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, do we normally have three coaches for swimming? Um, two swimming okay. coaches and one diving coach. And one diving. Okay. Yeah, Is that okay, because yep. yep. it just says swimming. It didn't say diving. Okay, thank you. Okay. The clearances are turning around in just a couple of weeks, aren't they, pretty quickly?
to the court. Yeah. Any other questions? Last item is an annual approval, the unemployment compensation program. Mr. Kessler, brief overview. Yes. Uh, so information presented there, we use uh, interstate tax service. I've uh, been using them for several years. Um, and so they would, you know, submit their proposal to continue advocating on our behalf. Again, notes and information are there, no increase in cost. Um, and we're terribly pleased with their service uh, from Ms. Billman and myself. So hope to continue. Okay, that brings us to the, uh, no questions, I assume. Agenda review? We will um, have the items in two weeks that we've discussed tonight. We'll certainly bring forward additional personnel conferences, um, those items, in two weeks. Citizens comment number two. Michelle Eller, I saw it was going to be a short meeting tonight, and I was up at the Manchester Township a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, and I saw something I was really excited about, so I'd like to share it with you tonight. It's a history of the school district. I found some information out, and maybe you have some more to put the pieces together. But in 2015, in October 2015, next to our property, the Shindell Farm, across from the school property on Sinking Springs, uh, Church Road. It's Church Road in Sinking Springs. That was in the Shindell family for many, many years. The farm went up for sale, and I was at, at the public sale. And what I found was there were boxes of books all over the yard. Years ago, Mr. Shindell was a teacher. And on these books came from Manchester Township School District. And ever since then, I was trying to put these pieces together. And the books I have, it, I have a whole shelf of them. I got them for a dollar. This is 1907, and this is the history of political theory and party organization in the United States. It is so interesting. It's the first 125 years in our country, there was a division between the party with the state's rights and the party of the federal government. And this one is 1915. This is the elementary civics for Pennsylvania. <coughs> and this is 1918. This is elementary American history. And this one is 1927. And this is the history of the United States. And these books, Dr. Stone, how you like history. I never had an interest in history as a student. But when I started finding these old history books at public sales, it's just incredible when you read this. You feel like it's written in the time that it happened. You read about the Indians and the colonists and their relationships and Christopher Columbus, and which is next Monday, and um, William Penn. And it, it, it is just amazing. I just respect these people. It tells what they went through and the sacrifices they made. Um, but anyway, at the township, I found the history of the Auchenbaugh Meeting House, the uh, Manchester Historical Society put, put, researched this and put these sheets together. And this is the Auchenbaugh Meeting House, the early years, and the other one is a meeting house. But it talks about how this became the school. And then I go and find about the Manchester uh, School District. So I'm trying to put this together. But I'm going to take you back to the late 1700s, the Sunday school movement. Before that was the meeting houses is where the church services were, but they didn't have Sunday school back then. But the Sunday school movement began in England in the late 1700s as an effort to improve the literacy of poor children. I found it inter interesting that even back then they knew that education was important for the poor children. Um, it used the Bible as a basic text to reading, uh, to teach reading and writing while instilling fundamental Christian values and beliefs. The movement was not affiliated with any denomination or church. The efforts spread rapidly to America and many local schoolhouses were used as meeting places by Sunday schools 
In fact, some of the early one-room schools in Manchester Township were used for Sunday school programs in addition to the normal public school programs. Eventually, the churches developed their own Sunday school programs. And then uh, on this sheet, by 1849, the common school law had become established in Pennsylvania after years of resistance. So the local people didn't want to give up their authority of their schools. But here was government coming in. So the directors of the new Manchester Township School District leased the Ockenball Meeting House for use as a local free common school. So anyway, I found that interesting. And I don't know if I'm right, but I'm thinking after the Manchester Township School District, they put North York, Manchester, and Stony Brook together, and it became Central York School District. Does anybody know that? representatives of the North York Borough, Manchester Township, and a portion of Springersbury Township joined to form the Central Joint School System of York County. We start our history in 1950. Okay, okay. We have a document on that. Okay. But anyway, I'll just let you know, I do have old history books if you have any interest, and I'll give these sheets to Brent if anybody has an interest. <laughs> Thank you, Shella. That I too like reading old books, by the way. One Summer by Bill Bryson, about 1926. Great book. Yeah, yeah. So. Any other citizen comment? Yes, sir. Hi, Steve Feldman. Uh, Dr. Snell, I just had a question regarding some of the, the uh, student statistics. You show statistics to an ex-banker and they get kind of wonky about it. Um, I was curious if you have any information uh, on the uh, free and reduced statistic about the, the uh, how that number how how that number is determined. Is it is it uh, strictly income of parents? Is it how, how does it go up and down from year to year, and what are the factors that enter into it? We'll be, uh, Ms. Ansel and I will be happy to speak with you. But it is, an, it's an income, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, there's, there's, there's limits and qualifications. We'll follow up with you. Okay, just great, thanks. Any other comments? Board comments? Please. For the record, I will not be here in two weeks for the meeting. I have w one comment. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the uh, Central York uh, District engaged in the service of the interstate tax. $3.3 million saved over, what, over 40 years is, is, not, is commendable. I think that service ought to be continued, and whoever made that decision to go with that uh, it made a, it was a an great impressive decision. number too. Yeah. Yes. Any other comments? Going once, twice. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. We'll go next door. Next door. Don't forget. <laughs>